Welcome to Smacky's Garage, where today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about carburetors and chokes. I recently swapped my carburetor on my car off from a manual choke to a carburetor that does not have a choke. And we're gonna talk about what I'm experiencing for the first few days of having it on the car. Now, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. I do a lot of comparisons of car parts, garage supplies, and tools. Now, the, one of the main reasons why I'm running no choke on this carburetor now is because I wanted to get the experience of what it's like going from an electric choke to a mechanical choke to no choke on the car. And I wanted to share that with you. A lot of people have experienced them, but they haven't done a comparison against them. So my goal is later this year, I wanna do a comparison of what it's like with an electric choke, a manual choke, and no choke, and what it's like in different scenarios. Now, I don't really drive the car in that cold of weather, so it'll probably go down to 60 degrees, but when we do the comparison, we're gonna focus on mainly hobby cars, toy cars, something that you don't drive every day. Now, to talk about where we were, we were running a Holley Ultra 750 before on the car, and we've recently swapped that out. So here's the Holley 750 that was running. You can see it's kind of a mess. It really needs to be cleaned out. So that's something I'm gonna do over the next week or two before I put it away. This was originally an electric choke carburetor, but I swapped it over to manual choke last year. You know, it, so far the experience was good with it. It ran well, but I wanted to see what it was like with no choke, how much of a difference is it? So I need to clean this up, put it away. Let me know if you want me to do a video on cleaning the carburetor or something. That could be something that I do next. Now it's becoming rarer and rarer to find people that have experienced carburetors with no choke. So down in the comments, let me know if you've had one in the past, what vehicle was on and what was your overall experience with it. Now last week we did an install of the carburetor on the engine and when we put the carburetor on the engine, the first fire up, it wasn't running good. The car was running unbelievably rich and it was smoking out pretty much my entire neighborhood. So the car wasn't running good. Right. Now before I took the carburetor off the car, I did a short video of the carburetor and asked pretty much in the comments, what do people see wrong with this image? And one of the things you're gonna notice in that short is if you look at that sight glass, so you are seeing the carburetor, the gas start to evaporate off. And while you do that, you're seeing the carburetor gas level actually start dropping down. So what the carburetor was telling me is there was an issue with keeping the gas in the main, in the primary side of the carburetor. So I ended up taking it off, taking a look at kind of what was wrong with the carburetor. And there was something that I originally caused on it. So before I put it on my car, I actually opened it up and I changed the power valve off on it. Now the engine it's on makes about six inches of vacuum and having a power valve that's four and a half, which is the one that came with the car, isn't ideal because it would be opening too early and dumping more gas in it. So I went for the tried and true method of look at the power valve, set it about half what the inches of vacuum are. So I ended up putting a two and a half in there. And after that, you know, I put everything back together, then put it on the car. One of the things that I missed when I was putting it back together was looking at the power valve seals. I noticed, actually, let me take it off of this one. Now, one of the things that I missed when I was looking at it is, so the power valve, the seal that was with the new power valve was a little bit bigger than the previous one and it fit a little bit looser. So when I swapped that over, what I noticed is the power valve itself wasn't sealing against this metering block. So I took everything apart and I could clearly see that on the gasket, there was a little bit of a line of where this actually occurred. So I took it apart. I replaced the power valve and it seems to be okay. Now the reason why gas was dumping in is because since this was sitting off a little bit, it was allowing the fuel to dump out from here and go onto the other side through the engine, through where the vacuum is supposed to be. And that vacuum was actually pulling fuel in through this and into the engine. With that, you know, it's fixed now, so I'm happy about that. It is running a lot better, and I was able to start it up, drive it around, and I'm very happy with it so far. Now, before I put the carburetor back on the car, I actually took everything apart on the bench here and took a look at it. I resealed the power valve. I ended up buying a lot of new gaskets so I could do that. When I resealed the power valve, I filled up both bowls with gas using a squeeze bottle that was filled with gas 
and I bench tested it. I actually had plans to build a carburetor test stand, but I haven't done that yet. I was able to fill it with gas by using a squeeze bottle filled with gas, and I filled up both sides of the fuel vents until it essentially was at the point where it needed to be on the level. Now, it's not as easy to do that as it, as it would seem because what ended up happening is, you know, if, you were, if there's no place else for it to go and you're blocking that line and filling it up, it's, the pressure is not going to be equivalent on one side versus the other. So it is going to come through the boosters, which I did see, but after letting it sit overnight, all the gas is still there. The other thing that I noticed is after I did this and I fixed it, the car is still holding fuel pressure, which it wasn't before on the carburetor. So let's go ahead and take a look at now kind of the fuel levels on the floats. Now, one of the things that you can see is there is fuel on, you can see it on the primary side there. And there is fuel on the secondary side too, when I tilt it. And one of the things that notes is after a good period of time, this is still showing that there is fuel, then fuel pressure, which means no fuel is draining out of the floats and into the engine, which I believe was the problem that I was having before. But I still have a lot of cleanup to do in here because I'm, I actually still have the old choke cable and everything that I need to remove or find something to do with. I actually have a still the old electric uh, cable that goes to the previous choke. So that needs to get removed. So I still have a lot of work to do to button this up. Now to starting the car up, I'm still getting used to starting the car. When I, I've never had a car without a choke before. So when I started up for the first time, it needs a lot more gas than I would typically do it if it was an electric choke, which I guess is to be expected. And there's a lot more fiddling around with the throttle to make sure that it has enough gas to get to the point where it's warm enough so that the gas is um, atomizing correctly. If it wasn't atomizing correctly, then the, it essentially is gonna stall out. So I've been experimenting with it, kind of trying to figure out what's the best way to cold start the car, but so far, so good. You know, after the car is running, it runs fantastic. I would say it's running a lot better than the carburetor that I have over here. So this carburetor definitely needs to be cleaned, definitely has some issues with it and you know didn't have the adjustability that i wanted but with some cha quick changes to the engine i changed on the timing i see it, we did all the vacuum lines everything seems to be running really well now i'm going to end up testing it again today to see how everything goes but i just wanted to follow up and do an update on kind of this carburetor my experience with it so far it's all been good the only issues that i've had have been ones that i have caused which yeah it happens you're working on cars now there's definitely a lot more coming up for projects on these cars Thanks for tuning in today on Smacky's Garage. I'll see you next week.